What's going on guys? This is Rob and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse 2 comes out this weekend. And while I have not seen the movie yet, what better way to celebrate than to run over every version of Spider-Man that we know anything about in Marvel Comics and even some outside of Marvel Comics and fingers crossed, we see them in the movie. Supposedly, there's supposed to be like 250 different versions of Spider-Man, although only a handful will probably see in any meaningful way. But let's kick our list off, right? So coming off the top is Spider-Man from a universe that some of you guys may not know what the numerical designation is, but I guarantee you're familiar with it, the Ultimate Spider-Man Cartoon Show. And I chose this one because a lot of you guys probably grew up with that show, or at least we're kicking the list off, because a lot of you guys grew up with that show. I personally did not, but it is phenomenal. Why not start things off there? Now, coming out of that one, we've got Earth 92131. This is Spider-Man from the 1990s animated series. This is the one that I grew up on. It was a phenomenal show then, it's a phenomenal show now, it still holds up, but X-Men the Animated Series is better. But coming out of Earth 6799, this is the 1960s Spider-Man animated cartoon show. Now, for those of you guys who aren't really familiar with why that one matters so much, that's where the now famous Spider-Man intro song comes from. Spider-Man, Spider-Man does whatever a spider can. That show is what made it popular. Now, Earth 120703. This is the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man universe. I'm gonna get a lot of flack for saying this, I will not apologize. Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man is better than Toby and Tom's. No, I'm not gonna apologize for it. It's amazing. I love that version of Spider-Man. But coming out of Earth 96283, this is Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man universe. And then coming out of Earth 1 with a whole bunch of nines is Tom Holland's Spider-Man universe, also known as the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I don't care what Kevin Feige and those guys say, it is not Earth 616, it's Earth 19, whatever, all the different nines that come after it, who cares, 19 repeating, that's just the way that it is. Now, of course, Earth-65 is the Spider-Gwen universe. Now, of course, a lot of you guys know about Spider-Gwen from Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Her popularity was actually unintentional. A Little bit of fun history here. When Spider-Gwen popped up on the scene, it was actually the design of her costume that made her incredibly popular, right? Just the cover art, it was phenomenal. When that comic book came out, you could not go to a Comic-Con without seeing every white chick between the ages of 16 and 27 cosplaying as Spider-Gwen. Admittedly, it was cool to see the Phantom just rallying around a singular character like that, but her character has remained popular ever since. Of course, she comes from a universe where she received a bite at the hands of a radioactive spider instead of Peter Parker. And in fact, in that reality, Peter Parker became the lizard, and then she ultimately ended up killing him. Now, Earth 3145 is from the main Spider-Verse event. That is an Earth where Uncle Ben becomes Spider-Man. You didn't really know a whole lot about his reality. All we knew is that he operated as Spider-Man for quite some time. He's the one that received the bite from a radioactive spider instead of Peter Parker when he went with Peter to the science exhibit. The problem here is that he referred to it as the Emerald Elf, which was basically his universe's version of the Green Goblin. The Green Goblin killed Peter and Aunt May. And then following that, Basically, Uncle Ben quit, but when all the inheritors were running around the Spider-Verse and they were killing Spider-Man everywhere, he ended up retreating to what was basically a bunker. During that time, the Dr. Octopus of his reality basically initiated a world war and the entirety of the world was laid waste and just filled with radiation. But from Earth 98121, this is actually a reimagining of Spider-Man's origin, which was initially considered to be in continuity, but was later moved to its own universe. This story was known as Spider-Man Chapter One. It was a really cool story. I don't know why Marvel got rid of it. But from Earth 15, this actually includes different variations of Spider-Man like the spider. This is known as the Exiles. Now, the reason why I say Earth 15 and reference the Exiles is because in Marvel Comics, the Exiles was actually one of the coolest concepts ever created. The gist behind this is that the Exiles were actually a multiversal team that was composed of different characters from different realities. From Earth 15, this version of Spider-Man known as the spider was actually a Peter Parker who had essentially merged with the Carnage symbiote and ended up becoming a killer. It was 
really, really amazing. But Earth 8101 introduces us to Spider Monkey. This is actually a version of Spider Man where basically he's a monkey, but he actually kills villains because in that reality, the idea is that if villains cannot be redeemed, they're executed. And that's just the way that it is. But Earth 2301 gives us the Mangaverse. And in the Mangaverse, we basically have manga spider-man this is a version of spider-man that's actually a ninja and seeks revenge against the villainous ronin known as venom it is a phenomenal story one of the best stories that marvel's written ever in the history of marvel with regards to spider-man but earth 58163 gives us a world where spider-man masquerades as a mutant in order to fit into a society dominated by mutants entirely, but ultimately his identity is exposed by J. Jonah Jameson. And if you're familiar with Marvel Comics, you guessed it, this is House of M. And it's one of the greatest stories that Marvel's ever done. People seem to get, get a little finicky when I never like talk about how crappy a story is. I mean, there's definitely bad stories. And in fact, in this list, we're gonna run over one of the darkest stories ever in the history of Marvel. But coming out of Earth TRN 566, this is actually a continuation of the 1990 Spider-Man cartoon show. Now, here's the reason why Marvel uses TRN when it comes to their universe designations. Any time an alternate reality is created, but it's not fully explored, or sometimes even that line of comics is canceled, Marvel will not give it an alternate reality designation. Now, it's not as though the entirety of Marvel editing sits around and says, this is what the numerical designation would be. It's usually just a writer that actually just throws in the name or at least the number of the universe. But because that was never done with regards to this, we don't actually get a definitive explanation. It's just simply a temporary reality numbering until someone comes along and officially establishes that it's based off an existing universe. It kind of is, but some of the stories in this comic actually deviated from the original source material. So it's not necessarily tied directly in line with the original 1990s cartoon universe continuity. But coming out of this, we get Earth 2818, which basically gives us Cyborg Spider-Man. But what this guy is, is effectively an almost carbon copy of Spider-Man as you know him. The difference is he has cybernetic parts instead of just organic human parts. They do grant him differing powers to various degrees, but still his role is more or less the same. Now, of course, the next one that we get is the Earth 616 Spider-Man, but not the one that you think, of course, because that's mostly obvious, the main Marvel Universe Spider-Man. Why would we add that on this list? So this is Superior Spider-Man, and this guy's phenomenal. So Superior Spider-Man was actually the result of a story called Dying Wish, which Marvel had been building up to for quite some time. In effect, Dr. Octopus was dying. And so in order to keep himself alive, he swapped bodies with Peter Parker. So Peter Parker's mind was placed in the body of the dying Dr. Octopus, and then ultimately the body passed away. And the mind of Dr. Octopus was put in the body of Peter Parker. In this line of comics, which didn't last all too long, only about two and a half, maybe three years, this gave us one of the greatest redemption arcs of Dr. Octopus in history. He went from a guy who was basically just a villain running around as Spider-Man and doing villainous stuff to what effectively became a superhero and starting Parker Industries. So for those of you guys who read all new, all different Spider-Man and you don't know how Peter Parker became a billionaire, that's because of superior Spider-Man. Dr. Octopus set all that stuff in motion. But Earth 40081 is actually just a reality where Peter Parker was bitten by a radioactive spider, but never actually got any powers. And in fact, this is from a story arc called Powerless. Instead, all that really happens here is his hand just atrophies. But Earth 1610, which we will revisit here in a little bit, is the home of the ultimate Spider-Man, Peter Parker. This was basically just a 2000s reworking of Peter Parker and the Marvel mythos that was done in a way to answer the question, what would it look like if, in the year 2000, superheroes were popping up for the very first time? A lot of the themes and a lot of the motivations and a lot of the ideas of the characters were updated to reflect the modern age. Ultimately, he ended up dying. But this version of Spider-Man is one of the most celebrated in the history of Marvel Comics. And to this day, despite the fact that his character was killed off, he still has a ridiculously devoted fan base. But Earth 34281, this gives us a version of Peter Parker that was actually abused by his Uncle Ben as a child and ends up striking a deal with what's effectively a kind of spider demon in his basement and actually ends up going forward as Spider-God. 
And so this leads us into a universe that houses a storyline that's one of my absolute favorites. This is Earth 295. And in this reality, Spider-Man is actually executed by the Apocalypse regime for allying with those individuals who stand against Apocalypse. Specifically, this is the 1995 Age of Apocalypse storyline. I love this storyline. The Human High Council, Magneto's X-Men, the Mkron Crystal, all those things, Legion Quest and so on. It's a great story. But following this, we go to Earth 311, which is one of the most popular stories that Marvel's written. And in fact, you're gonna see this story floating around as a major point within Marvel What If season two. And in this universe, Spider-Man serves as an apprentice to the Royal Spy Master in the Marvel 1602 universe. So that's really, really cool. Hopefully again, we'll see this character within Spider-Verse into the Spider-Verse too. But then we switch over to Earth-13. Now Earth-13 is an alternate reality that's predicated on a different set of events based on the main Marvel Universe, specifically a story called Acts of Vengeance. And in this story, this basically dealt with the villain Loki, or at least he was a villain at the time, bringing together all the different villains for the purpose of attacking and destroying the superheroes. Obviously, it didn't work. Think of it as like a less successful version of what we saw in Old Man Logan when Red Skull did the same thing, but then it actually succeeded. So in the Acts of Vengeance storylines, one of the things that had happened is that Loki had unleashed the Tri-Sentinel in the city of New York. In response to this, Peter Parker was granted something called the Enigma Force, i.e. he became Captain Universe. The Enigma Force is literally a source of power that we hardly know anything about. That's why Marvel gave it that name. So they never really have to explain it. But a person who has the power of the Enigma Force can do a wide variety of different things. Ultimately, he lost that power, but not before he punched the Incredible Hulk into space. Earth-13 is actually an answer to the question, what if he never lost that ability? And in fact, during the Spider-Verse event, Earth-13 serves as a kind of safe haven for all the different members of the Spider-Army that are either fleeing from the Inheritors or trying to marshal their forces, building battle formations, whatever the case happens to be. At least it stays that way until the leader of the Inheritors, Solace, shows up and kills that Spider-Man. And then all bets are off, and they're all just fleeing for their lives for what's basically the rest of the story. Now, Earth-772 gives us a follow-up to the original Amazing Spider-Man story where Peter Parker tried to join the Fantastic Four and where he was initially given the boot by the Fantastic Four and refused to be allowed onto the team just due to his youth and inexperience. Earth-772 gives us an answer to the question, what if he was brought onto the team? And so instead of it being the Fantastic Four, we're now introduced to the Fantastic Five. Funny enough, whenever you look up the Fantastic Five itself, you see Peter Parker kind of there in the background. I know it's not supposed to look that way, but he just looks sad and dejected, as if he's onto the team, but not really part of the team, which kind of makes sense because the Fantastic Four is a family. But Earth 9602 is actually one of the more interesting aspects in both Marvel and DC Comics, because this is what we refer to as the Amalgam Universe. And this came out of a story called Marvel vs. DC. And what it basically happened here is both Peter Parker and Superboy actually fused to form Spider-Boy and basically exhibited all the spider powers that we're familiar with, which also included telekinesis. Now, Earth 10919 is actually an alternate reality that kind of follows up to Civil War. And in effect, instead of Peter Parker losing the iron spider armor that he got from Tony Stark during the Civil War event, and at the end of the Civil War event, when he turned against Tony and decided to ally with Captain America, in this reality, he never loses the iron spider suit. Now, ultimately, it's all for Null because he's basically killed when the Inheritors are traveling across the multiverse in the Spider-Verse event and killing different versions of Spider-Man. But Earth 2149 gives us one of the more popular universes in the entirety of Marvel Comics. And in fact, this was a heavily anticipated episode in Marvel What If Season 1. This, of course, is Marvel Zombies. And in this universe, we have a version of Peter Parker that has a really gross power. Instead of shooting webbing out of his wrists, he shoots veins out of his wrists. And that's how he swings around. 
even now, it still gives me the willies. Now, following this, we go into Earth 5701, and in this universe, not a whole lot to be seen here. Instead, this introduces us to what's called Pestilent Spider-Man. This basically introduces us to Peter Parker, who had become one of the horsemen of Apocalypse, known as Pestilence. But Earth 1298 brings us to a relatively obscure universe, depending on how deep of a reader you are when it comes to the X-Men mythos, but also introduced us to one of the most powerful concepts in existence. Of course, that concept being the Goblin Force. This particular story is known as Mutant X. Now, in this story, Spider-Man doesn't really do a whole lot to speak of. Instead, he's basically just the original six-armed Spider-Man, but he never finds a way to cure himself, so he just spends the rest of his days walking around with six arms. But Earth 982 is a very popular line of comics, although I think that's kind of waned in recent years. This is called Marvel Comics 2. So Marvel Comics 2 was actually the idea of the Ultimate Universe before the introduction of the Ultimate Universe. The gist behind Marvel Comics 2 was, much like with the Ultimate Universe, to retell the origins of characters in a more updated way and to make Marvel more accessible. The other caveat of MC2 is the characters were very similar to their Earth-98 counterparts in the sense that they aged in real time. And so this actually gave us a version of Peter Parker who's more of a supporting character for his daughter who becomes Spider-Girl named Mayday Parker. And of course, for the most part, she's basically inherited all of his powers. But Earth 70237 gives us an older Spider-Man who's actually fighting against a city that's been completely taken over by Venom and what we now refer to as the Spider-Man Reign storyline. But Earth 9591 is probably one of the darkest stories ever written in the history of Marvel. This is a story called Marvel Ruins. In this particular comic book, Spider-Man is actually trying to become or at least gain powers like so many other people around him. He basically exposes himself to a radioactive spider, which bites him, but then he ends up dying of radiation sickness and actually spreads this sort of radioactive rash to various people, including the guy who's going around and documenting how dark and terrible things are. Bruce Banner being exposed to the gamma bomb and then turning into a giant irradiated mass of tumors, Steve Rogers going crazy from the Super Soldier Serum. If you don't have just some overwhelming desire to read this story, I would kind of suggest you stay away from it. But if you're interested in torturing yourself, you will find a link to it down in the comments section. Now, the next universe is one that you guys may be familiar with on some level due to the first Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse movie. This one focuses on Marvel noir. Spider-Man noir is just one part of that universe. Now, there's a whole X-Men noir and everything. It's really, really cool. And in fact, we should probably cover it here on the channel because it's basically just a kind of answer to the question, what would the universe look like if superheroes were popping up during the time of the Great Depression. But Earth 602636, this is actually a world that reimagines the relationship between Spider-Man and Mary Jane Watson as a teenage drama. And despite the fact that I'm an almost 40 year old man, this story is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I love this story. But Earth 999 is actually a story that introduces us to Spider Cat, who's basically just a cat that gains spider powers and then fights a pigeon known as Venom, which is an equally amazing story. It's every bit as awesome as you think it is. Now, following this, we go into Earth 50101, which is Spider-Man India. And it's a really cool concept. The character actually had a major role within Spider-Verse. And it was really just kind of cool to see Marvel doing like multicultural representation. They did the same thing with Giant Size X-Men back in 1975. So it was cool to see them doing that with the Spider-Man universe. But following this, we jump into Earth 12101. And in this reality, Deadpool is fighting Spider-Man. But the fight is really more drawn out than it needs to be. And it's really more just Deadpool kind of prolonging things. And when Peter Parker asks why, Deadpool says, because he's just kind of enjoying the moment and he's going to do the thing that makes the most logical sense in terms of defeating Peter Parker. He shoots him in the face. And then following this, he goes on a killing spree across the Marvel Universe. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you guessed it. This is Deadpool 
kills the Marvel Universe. But in Earth 21205, this actually gives us an alternate reality that's pretty tragic, that once Gwen Stacy's killed by the Green Goblin, Peter Parker freaks out and then kills the Green Goblin. But as a coping mechanism, he adopts the Goblin identity of his own. Specifically, he becomes the Hobgoblin. So he basically becomes a villain as a way of grieving the death of Gwen Stacy. Pretty tragic and kind of messed up. But in Earth 87127, Flash Thompson is actually bitten by the radioactive spider instead of Peter Parker, and he ends up becoming Captain Spider. Now on Earth 9997, this is the home of a storyline that we started, never finished, and people keep asking for it. This is Earth X, and we should finish it. Universe X, Paradise X, those stories were amazing. This is a reality where things are kind of post-apocalyptic, but also a little hopeful at the same time. But Peter Parker is basically just an aging guy who does have his daughter, but has effectively given up on superhero antics. The hopeful aspect of it comes in the fact that towards the end of the story, he ends up redonning his Spider-Man costume and then goes out into the fray to become a superhero again. The costume doesn't quite fit, and he's a little older and fatter than he used to be, but it is adorable to see him trying to recapture the glory of his younger days. <laughs> now, Earth 15901 is actually a reality we know virtually nothing about. All we know is that by whatever manner and whatever means, Peter Parker was somehow bitten by a vampire and ended up becoming a vampire Spider-Man. We don't see him very long. He's killed and consumed by the Inheritors fairly quickly. But Earth TRN 458, this is a world that never actually moved beyond the medieval age. And this version of Spider-Man prefers to simply maintain the status quo instead of becoming a superhero. This is the spider Knight. Now, Earth 70105 is actually a reality where Bruce Banner was transformed into Spider-Man when he was bitten by a gamma irradiated spider. But Earth TRN 454 is actually a reality that was initially introduced in the Spider-Man Unlimited cartoon show that houses a girl named Petra Parker. And this is where all the gender roles are reversed. Specifically, the men are women and the women are men. It was a phenomenal aspect of that episode. But Earth 8311 is of course where Spider-Ham comes from because Spider-Ham initially started off as a spider and was bitten by a radioactive pig. <laughs> and now he has his current form. I know it sounds weird. It's very strange. Roll with it. It's just comics. But Earth 13989 is actually a timeline where superheroes turned into werewolves and then developed a taste for human flesh. In this instance, we're introduced to Spider-Wolf. Now, Earth 14512 is the introduction of Penny Parker, who pilots the spider suit. This universe is based heavily on Neon Genesis and anime. So it's one of the coolest versions of the character that we've ever seen. But Earth 833 is actually the home of Spider-Man UK, also known as William Braddock. This guy is part of the Captain Britain Corps, which is effectively like the Green Lantern Corps from DC Comics, except instead of each member of the Captain Britain Corps monitoring like a portion of their universe, they monitor the whole universe, which seems kind of weird because Captain Britain's not very powerful. But this brings us to the final two versions of Peter Parker, which are exceedingly dark. Earth 51412 is the home of Patton Parnell, who didn't actually gain spider powers when he was bitten by a radioactive spider. Instead, he just turned into like this giant grotesque looking spider monster. And when he ended up biting his girl, she basically woke up from it all thinking it was a kind of nightmare. And as the story comes to a close, all these little spiders burst out of her neck, right? And so it's, it's crazy. It's creepy. If you don't like spiders, do not read that comic book. Now, of course, following this, we get Earth 11580. And this is a version of Spider-Man known as Spider's Man. And this guy is just a whole bunch of spiders that operate with a hive mind and make up a singular being. One of the other cool things about this, this is one of the most powerful versions of Spider-Man we've ever seen because it's almost impossible to kill this guy. Because if you were to like shoot him with a gun or something, the spiders will just kind of separate and make an opening for the bullet to pass through, assuming they can move that fast. It's comic books, right? Just one of those weird things. But following this, we're going to leave Peter Parker and we're going to switch over to Miles Morales and then Miguel O'Hara. Now, one of the funny things about this is there isn't a whole lot of alternate reality depictions of these characters. One, because like Miguel O'Hara, for example, already comes from an alternate reality. And two, he's not as popular as Peter Parker. The same thing with Miles Morales, but also 
Miles is fairly new. So kicking things off here, there is Earth 1610. This is the original reality of Miles Morales in Marvel Comics. And in fact, Miles Morales was introduced to us in a story called Ultimate Fallout. In effect, what had happened is Peter Parker in the Ultimate Universe had died, and Miles Morales had actually been bitten by a radioactive spider as well. But instead of simply just getting the same kind of powers that Peter Parker had, he got the same kind of powers that you see in like Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, where he has his Venom Blast, he can go invisible, or at least kind of camouflage himself more or less. But he ended up becoming that reality's version of Spider-Man. Now, after the events of Secret Wars in 2015, Miles Morales actually ended up crossing over into the main Marvel Universe and has basically been there ever since. But following this, we go into Earth-8, and this is actually a combination of a storyline as well as a future possible alternate reality, where Miles and Gwen actually get married and basically have a whole life and a relationship together. But following this, we go into Earth 61610, which is basically Battle World. And this is the version of Miles Morales that exists in the Secret Wars Battle World event, which is kind of a patchwork planet made up of like different alternate realities. Exactly which one of those realities he's in, I can't remember off the top of my head, so I'm not going to give you a definitive answer. But from here, we actually go into Earth TRN664. This is Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe again. Why? Because Marvel was basically trying to find a way to make more money. So they gave us this story, which is really more of like a half-assed cash grab. But in this universe, Miles Morales is simply just shown to us as one of the many superheroes that Deadpool's killed a second time. But after this, we go into Earth TRN 517, which is actually one of the coolest concepts out there in Marvel Comics known as the Contest of Champions. Now, this version of Miles is basically a participant in the contest, which is a game that involves various Marvel superheroes and villains, all of whom essentially fight to the death. But Earth 1048 is Marvel's Spider-Man, Miles Morales Spider-Man video games, the PS4 games. And I just gotta say it, I just gotta throw it out here, the Miles Morales game it's better than the first one. I love the story in that game. It's phenomenal. It was shorter, definitely, but I feel like it was better. Something that I recently found out when I was talking to Benny over at Comic Story, apparently it was supposed to be a DLC and they just made it like a whole separate game, which is why it's not called Spider-Man 2. And that kind of makes sense the more that I think about it. But Earth TRN 571, this is the home of Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. And while in this game, Miles is not a playable character, this version is mentioned in the game as being part of an alternate future. But Earth TRN 700 is of course, the home reality of Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, right? The whole first film and presumably part of the second film. I don't know why they'd start Miles off in an alternate reality. But Earth TRN 765 is the home of Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, the Black Order. And of course, in this version of the game, Miles is a playable character. Now, following this, we switch over to Miguel O'Hara. This is where we start to wrap things up, right? Miguel O'Hara actually comes from Earth 928, which is the future of the main Marvel Universe. Now, you might be asking yourself, why is it referred to as Earth 928 if the main Marvel Universe is Earth 616? and it's in the future of the main Marvel Universe. Because when it comes to the future in Marvel Comics, it's ever-changing. So until we get to 2099 in Marvel Comics, we won't definitively know if that's exactly how reality turns out. And so for the time being, it's just one possible future. In the same way that Days of Future Past is a possible future, the Age of Apocalypse is a possible future. They're all potential outcomes for the current situation that's unfolding at any given point in time, in Marvel Comics. But the original Miguel O'Hara, the way he was depicted and largely continues to operate in Marvel Comics, is that he doesn't actually have any Spider-Man powers. Instead, his abilities are all technology-based, that he works for Alchemax Corporation, which is exceedingly corrupt, just like Facebook in the modern era, and that he actually works to basically defeat the corrupt agenda of the very company he works for. Now, he works for Alchemax because Alchemax runs everything, right? And so, like, unless you want to be some vagrant standing on a street corner with a sign asking for money, you're going to end up having to work for Alchemax. And so, in the aftermath of the original Spider-Verse event, Miguel O'Hara actually ended up in the main Marvel Universe in the present day and just kind of resided there for a little while. But there was an attempt in Earth 96099 to actually reimagine the entirety of the 2099 universe, which was basically called Time Storm. People didn't like it, the story was trash, Marvel scrapped it. But with that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this video to an end. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section. Thank you for watching. Let me know if there's anybody that I missed and I will catch you all later. Peace.